Hello, we are Biffy Clyro. You're watching Rock Sound. Fuck yeah. Back on Rock Sound, I'm James Wilson Taylor here in a lovely, lovely plush building in Warner Music, joined now by, of course, Biffy Clyro. How are you, boys? Very Hi. well, thanks, James. How are you doing? I'm very good, man. I'm very good. This is an exciting week for you guys. It really, really is. The new record's coming out, MTV Unplugged. Uh, I've heard it. I love it. It's really, really nice what you've done with the kind of classic songs and changing them up. How did you narrow those down? How did you select those particular tracks for making the MTV Unplugged? That, that was the toughest part. You know, we, we knew that whatever we choose, chose to play, we'd be disappointing some people and, and yeah, that's just the nature of being a band mm-hmm. as long as us. <laughs> yeah. But to be honest, it was the songs that felt the best and the songs that really have kind of connected with people the most over the years. There's no point, you know, we didn't want to go into MTV Unplugged and pay, play a bunch of B-sides that no one's ever sure. heard as much as we, we did practice all those B-sides. <laughs> really? and, but the reality was we didn't feel very comfortable doing them. You know, mm. there's there's... I think some of the most all all the songs that are on the unplugged are really suitable for it, and that was yeah. kind of like we were most relaxed, and it felt like the songs could breathe. And you know, there was a couple of songs from the night that we were that didn't make the album that we did play in the evening, and it, they just didn't they just didn't sound great listening back. So we kind of re rebuilt the evening in our minds. But you know, it's it's our prerogative, it's our record. You know, Absolutely. we wanted it to be as close to <laughs> perfection as possible without being a perfect record and I think that's why we we ended up losing a couple of songs is because we we didn't want to do like normal unplugs where it's like a TV show and they'll retake a song yeah. if it's not quite right we wanted it to be a one time only deal nice. and that's why it's warts and all ladies and gentlemen yeah warts they're keeping it special that's <laughs> lovely well I was gonna you kind of hinted at it there. I was gonna ask were there songs when you were picking them all out that you thought oh it would be great if this worked but this isn't an acoustic number there must have been a few Wolves of Winter isn't really an acoustic right. number Sure. Uh, yeah, there is. There's no such thing as a jaggy snake. But we, <laughs> we 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 thought about it for about half a second. Yeah. Now this is just ridiculous. But it doesn't stop people on the night shouting for them anyway. Yeah, no. <laughs> no chance for glitter and trauma around there. <laughs> no, no. Exactly. We we, we've actually played that acoustic before. Have you really? We did the yeah, year. Yeah, we definitely oh. did. No, I swear I we, we did. did. We did it with the vo- you guys started going. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> 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 we did vocal. We yeah. definitely did. We that did. Was we, we didn't know how to do acoustic. Uh, no. <laughs> Why did we stop doing that? Like, well, <laughs> did you not hear about we <laughs> I tell you what, one of the so like we practiced all the way down chapter prologue mm-hmm. and chapter one, and that's a song I always thought I always pictured as doing it or oh. unplugged. Oh. And right. the reality is, as soon as we took it away, the the moment where the song breaks dynamically, yep. you know, around about minute six, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like without that break, it was just it just didn't work in it. Right. And, and that's a song I would have, I would have bet money that that it would. Have, come alive you know and, and it, interesting. Yeah, yeah and and it just didn't if it, it just mm. it just made the song so it flatlined the song mm-hmm. and mm. it, it's kind of and you never know when that's going to happen that's yeah. the thing so you just got to you got to trust your instinct when we were sitting playing it you know as much as people want you know people want certain songs from certain eras but for us we we know what, what sounded yep. best and felt best amazing did you go back and look at any of the classic MTV Unplugged sessions we, 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 yeah. we made that mistake huge mistake yeah. absolutely <laughs> put the pressure you know, on because yeah. we you know we were 90s kids of the 90s mm, we sure. grew up and we just thought oh we'll go back and just kind of remind ourselves have a bit of a refresh and it just put the fear of God into oh, us we were mate. so scared we which were, ones in particular I mean Nirvana I guess is the obvious yeah. choice well yeah but with George Michael having yes. a whole orchestra and, and, uh, and like his a, voice and his voice you know <clears throat> that was next level oh, unplugged that yeah. was like an unplugged but he just happened to have everyone from the world playing <laughs> with it so it was like <laughs> so it was almost like the world was unplugged uh, but uh, yeah that's terrifying because uh-huh. he's got an orchestra that sounds amazing and he's George Michael yeah. <laughs> and I'm worn like the week before going, mm-hmm. you know <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> angels fall to <laughs> angels, you know it like, ain't gonna happen and it as James said, but we really dug into a lot of the classics, and, and we we shouldn't have done that. But it made us, it reminded us that actually we can't do what these bands do. These bands sure. are amazing, and these performances are amazing. Mm. All we can do is our own thing, and yes, I think so. that was actually a bit liberating. After the the shock and the fright of it, we, we kind of let the reality sink in. It was like, right, no, no, but we we we're not here to do George Michael or do Nirvana no. or do Neil Young. We're here to do yeah. to do Biffy, and, and that's what we fucking did. Mm. Yes, yes, boys, yes, you did. Uh, and we should say you got the acoustic tour coming up later in the year. Is yeah. that going to be a load of new surprises? Then I suppose have we got new songs we want to throw in the set? There, I, th- I think really that tour is kind to kind of to celebrate the MTV sure. gigs. So we're going to try and 
make the rooms look a bit like the set did that night and I guess the, the set will be similar songs I think it would be unwise to start flinging in brand new songs that nobody's ever heard <laughs> at all yeah I don't know. you know it's a long time it's away, a long time away I, I can see Gates of Heaven popping oh, in there well, but uh, yeah, I mean ben, Ben's kind of right. it, it's like it is to celebrate Unplugged but we, it's not we're not here to we won't be touring a, ver- a, a touring version of Unplugged right, 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 you know right. it's like it's gonna, we'll be playing different songs mm-hmm. most nights and it'll It'll have the spine. It'll be the unplugged album, but but it's not. You're not coming to see a live version of the show. No. This, this ain't Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. <laughs> Save that. That's the retirement plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do that in a few years. Still time. Still available, Jeff. Still available. <laughs> uh, we should talk about the future as well. So there's this. This is interesting. The film and album project. Is it Balance Not Symmetry? Is that what it's yes. called? Yeah, right. right. Tell me everything about that. I'm very excited to hear. So the strange thing about this is the music comes before the movie. So the ah. soundtrack is going to exist before the movie's even shot. Which is arse backwards is the right terminology for that. Bars backwards. Bars backwards. Not the same as bass backwards. Eh? That's excellent. Bars. That's Bars a horrible. Thing. Um, so basically, it's um, the movie will be shot in a matter of days. He, right. he, he workshop the, the director Jamie Adams. He workshops with the actors for a few weeks leading up to it, and it's kind of loosely scripted, and there's a plot line there. But hopefully, the music will be being played in the background during all this workshopping and that kind of bleeds into the actors' psyches and into the directors and, and hopefully has an influence on the movie itself. So wow. it's, it's, it's really interesting and we are we have bated breath to find out what's going to happen. With How it. much do you guys know then when you're writing the music about what the actual script is going to involve or what the plot's going to involve? Are you going in blind as well? No, we've, we've had a... Jamie works on things called scriptments, oh, which okay. is basically just like a, you know kind of an outline yeah. so we've had a, a few treatment. outlines mm-hmm. and he's doing it he, he ends up working up to like a 40 page outline wow. for the movie so that, that'll be what we'll be get. we'll be working off that before we finish the record but at the moment we just know the journey of the girl in the, in the movie where she needs to end up emotionally so we know the emotional ballpark right. it should be in but yeah the, the actual details will come cl- much closer to the filming mm-hmm. once Jamie because he's, he's already we're starting to put the songs in the scenes Right. So that's the stage we're at just now mm. to see what songs work where, and then after that, it'll be then just getting fine tuning the lyrics. God, that's a really bit. exciting. When mm-hmm. do you think we might see the final product? Then is there is there <clears> enough <throat> time on that? Yeah. Well, we're basically because we're working in our eighth album as Biffy as well, so okay. that will be out twenty nineteen, mm-hmm. hopefully before the summer. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really important for us that this record comes out this year at some point. I think we're looking September October and kind of as a wee celebratory aside after during the unplugged kind of thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know and, and and we might play a you know a tune or two from the soundtrack at the unplugged that's not decided yet mm-hmm. but fingers crossed that but yeah, yeah. Oh. But, you know so it's really it's really exciting and it's just really great to have a new challenge so so mm. long into being abandoned having made like seven studio records and we've got a bunch of b-sides albums and stuff it's it's really nice to kind of have a new spark and a new inspiration because yeah. if anything it's actually even kicked back into the album number eight as well you know oh, like, really like, it's informing that already yeah mm-hmm. yeah just it's funny how just your mind frees up you know as soon as like one of the songs the other, this is a classic example one of these songs that's on the soundtrack the other day i texted the boys going i can't can't get the lyric of the melody in this verse and i texted the boys and they, they were like yeah listen no worries we'll, you know we'll get on and as soon as i texted it i got it you Aww. know i was like oh there it is so it's, it's like sometimes <laughs> you just allow you put yourself under pressure you just allow to admit oh I can't do this and then suddenly you can do it and that's meant that's... to be though there yeah, it is yeah, <laughs> it yeah. clicks it yeah. clicks really nicely that's good uh, yeah we should say talking about new music I saw I saw an interview recently actually you commented there might be kind of a bit of a political influence on the lyrics do you want to expand on that like how yeah. how so how do you think it's going to be a Rage Against the Machines <laughs> oh, amazing <laughs> here we go um, can't wait no I, I think you know I mean I'm never going to sit down and write a song that's that's overtly political or is it but but I feel like politics and reality have blurred into one. Like, I don't think politics exist as 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 we knew it no. when we were growing up. You know, we were talking about it earlier. Does does anyone grow up now wanting to be a prime minister <laughs> or a president? No. So the system and the institutions are all wrong, and they're being run by the the wrong people. So, mm-hmm. but I just feel like what they've been doing wrong for years is just bled down and trickled down into right, right, right. into people's everyday realities and and. You know, this is going to sound incredibly backwards, but I don't think everyone should have a fucking opinion about everything. Like, not everyone's, not, like, my opinion is no, that fair. important, but, and neither's yours, you know, like, st- our <laughs> opinions aren't the fucking be all and end all. And that's what I hate. It's a world of opinions at the moment. Mm-hmm. And, like, and that doesn't do anything for me. So I, I feel like our reality and our society's changes sounds a bit 
kind of happy dippy day, but you know, <laughs> but it just I feel it's the national conversation. Is it's kind of inevitable? It's going to be it informing to be it somehow, yeah, because right? yeah. it impacts all parts of all our lives, yeah. you know, and and that's so that's what I'm, what I mean when I say it's, it'll be politicised without being political, because right. I just think I don't think it would suit my song right neither to kind of to try and be overtly political. You know, sure. it's it's not my not my style, but but I know that how I'm viewing the world and how I view my future your future and my niece's futures and my, and things like that I, I know that that's changed what i think a happy life can be right whereas i think when i was growing up it was you kind of almost believed in the happy ever after mm -hmm. which was naive mm -hmm. but now it's like the rain we'll this be lucky if we're still chance. here in 20 fucking five yeah. years you know so the yeah. goalposts have moved the goalposts the goalposts are fucked. Well, <laughs> <laughs> someone burnt the goalposts where down. are the goalposts yeah, yeah. they don't exist they don't anymore exist. it's not even glass half empty anymore it's glass half fucked. <laughs> That's Please her, God her, let yeah. that be the album title yeah, Glass go. Half oh. Fucked I would love that Oh my god <laughs>